Peter Brock, the man who sits on pole position for this afternoon's seventh round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship, trying to get some heat into the tyres. Well, there's some heat. Some heat here. Via the hay bales, someone decided to let off a charge here. Make sure everyone was awake. So Peter Brock, with a pole position, the 1989 Australian Touring Car Championship Series and sharing the front row with him today will be Colin Bond in the Caltech CXT Sierra. Let's have a look at the top ten, the way they line up for the penultimate round of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship. Pole has gone to Peter Brock in the Mobile Sierra. Second spot on the grid to Colin Bond in the Caltech Sierra. Second row inside Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra and alongside Tony Longhurst in the Benson and Hedges Sierra. From 5-2 Jimmy Richards in the Nissan Skylight. From position number 6-18 John Bow in the first of the Shell Ultra cars. From 7-12 Mark Scaife in the Nissan Skylight. From position 8-105 Brad Jones in the Mobile Racing Sierra. From 9, can you believe it, Dick Johnson in the second of the Shell cars and rounding out the top 10. Number 3 George Fury in the Nissan Skyline. Starting out of position 11, Andrew Medecki. Alan Grice back to action today in the Commodore. Starts out at 12. And Greg Hansford driving the ANZ Sierra that we normally associate with Alan Moffat. Alan Moffat has decided to give Greg a run leading up to the endurance races. And he's also our spe special guest commentator this afternoon. Welcome, Alan. Thank you very much, Mike. And great to be with you. Certainly on a day like this, I've you'd got the to, best seat. You'd have to be more nervous here at the moment than if you were lined up on the grid, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, well, I find my fingers rattling a little bit here. <laughs> Uh, not too many choices for the fellows here today. It's been raining all morning and uh, really only a choice of three uh, tires to go. We we'll await the start now of the seventh round of the uh, championship. We're about seven seconds away from the start. The flag is up. Can Johnson do it from behind this afternoon? Racing. Colin Bond gets the jump and is out quickly. Longhurst goes with him. Brock picks it up on the inside and Seaton comes for the run as well. Bond will lead them into the first turn. And they all negotiate turn number one OK. There's Brad Jones going through in the uh, second of the mobile cars. Now through the tight corner that leads them down the first of the short straights here at Winton. Brock the order. Second held by Bond. Third by uh, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson car. And a brilliant start from John Bauer in the number 18 uh, Shell Sierra as they work their way up towards Penright Corner. Brocky at this stage with the run of the race. There's Bauer putting pressure on uh, Glenn Seaton already. Tony Longhurst is the next one up. Jimmy Richards. Plenty of traffic congestion as they fight their way out of that corner. And they head up to the next of the right-handers. Tony Longhurst caught wide. This is really uh, Village Grand Prix material through this part of the circuit. Yes, it is, Mike. And uh, Brocky's got a fantastic lead already. Nothing but daylight in front of him. And he must have fif oh, 15 car lengths in front of him. He's done a great job on that back straight. Here comes John Bauer having a look at Glenn Seaton. Seaton drops to second, and you can just wait for the cheer now. They don't believe it, the crowd here. It's been a long time waiting for Peter Brock to lead one. And he does the first across the line, Peter Brock. Second spot being held by Glenn Seaton, but John Bauer already moving in on him. And Jim Richards looking very aggressive here in the Nissan Skyline. Colin Bond has gone to the pits. The gear lever has broken in his car. That was the problem he encountered on the first lap. Gave uh, Brock a nice break because Colin was on the front row with him and he must have held up the field while he was sorting out his uh, gear problems and that gave Brocky an unbelievable jump uh, and a nice one to have. But the field is still closing up quickly here because of the many hairpins on the Winton track. By the way, gentlemen, that is the first lap of a touring car race that's been led by anyone other than Johnson and Bauer since Wanneroo, round four, April 28, 1988. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we don't like listening to statistics like that, Gary, but uh, it's a credit to the Brock organization. They've, uh, they've worked hard on this car, uh, an Andy Rouse uh, derivative from England, and uh, they, they've worked hard to uh, come to grips with uh, all the idiosyncrasies that are associated with turbos and uh, done it well. And uh, apart from uh, a lot of us getting in trouble with qualifying yesterday and not getting our best foot forward down because of the weather, uh, the fellow that gets on pole never gets there by accident. Here comes Jimmy Richards, this time down the inside of John Bauer. And takes him too, so Jimmy Richards, the rainmaster, carrying our Dulux Auto Color race cam, now moves to third. And if there has been a big mover in this pack as well, it has to be Alan Grice, who started out of position number 12. 
Here's Richards making a big run round the outside of Glen Seaton. This is heady stuff. Bang, just a little tap there. And getting sideways out of the turn was Glen Seaton. So it uh, gives you the impression that Jim Richards wants to get up and race with Peter Brock early in the event. Just about everyone started on rain tires, Mike, so they'll they'll have a certain degree of grip, but one of the problems is going to unfold here rather quickly. Oh! oh there we go. Richards is off. Oh. So, Seaton. There's Jim. Oh, what a pity. Well, early, early laps of the race, as long as they don't get bogged in that grass, they might just... Jim's spinning his wheels like crazy. If he just keeps the momentum, he might get it going. Looks like Glenn is stuck. Here comes Scafe, I believe, down on the inside of John Bow. Moment of truth. That's George Fury. Georgie Fury. Now, he started so far back in the pack out of 10. So they're starting to really stand on the gas. Brock leads them across the strike. We'll catch it in a second, but Alan Grice is just making a chance like you couldn't believe. Fury into second. John Bow. Grice is up to fourth. And there's the replay on our Caltex. As you can see it, the touch between Jimmy Richards and Glenn Seaton taking them out of the racetrack area down onto the infield. That really is a pity. Brock leads. George Fury is uh, running in second place. John Bow third. Alan Grice running fourth. A heavy car in the rain will always have a nice advantage. The weight pushes itself down onto those tires, heats the tires up quicker than on a lighter car. And Grice will be having a much more firmer control of his vehicle, and it's quite evident the way he's going about the business of carving his way through the field. Uh, John's ready to do some carving with him, but this gives Grice the run for the... Uh, uh, well, he did have the run for a while, but they've started to close up. Longhurst is off on the inside, gets back on the track. Brad Jones is up into fifth position. He's done a terrific job as well in the second of the mobile cars. I tell you, there's a fair old carve up going on for third. There's second going through. And then, of course, third now is John Bow, followed by Brad Jones and Grice down the inside of him. And maybe Grice has lost that uh, momentum now because Brock, across the line, probably 10 car lengths ahead of George Fury in car number three. And Almost a similar gap back to John Bow, Brad Jones and uh, Alan Grice. Then Tony Longhurst and Mark Scaife. Very unusual race so far. Greg Hansford still powering along with them as well. He's at the uh, tail of the leaders and uh, as such is in a box seat to take advantage of any other mishaps that might unfold. Mark Scaife's Scaife. got trouble going up the short shoot down the back straight. Yeah, dropping back through the field, passed by Andrew Medecki and Dick Johnson and about to be taken by Larry Perkins. Well, it's everywhere. Robbie Francovic has, uh, has uh, gone into the pit area. Lots of oil pressure, we were told, on uh, the Jim Richards car, and he's heading back to the pits. That really is bad luck because he was making one heck of a race of it, Jimmy Richards. But Richards goes to the pits, and there is our race leader, Peter Brock. It is now starting to pour rain here at Winton. And he'll be very pleased for that, Mike, because one of the things that was uh, an absence of the opening laps was a lack of rooster tails. The track was getting too dry, but everybody had the rain tires on. This is what the tires require, is a nice little shower now to keep everybody nice and wet. Well, Brad Jones just ran the entire back straight out in the mud. Here's Grice coming through the corner with John Bow behind him, Longhurst, Brad Jones and Andrew Medecki. Grice is in third spot. Brock continues to lead. George Fury is closing the gap on him. Grice third, Bow fourth, Longhurst fifth, Brad Jones in sixth position, followed by Andrew Medecki seventh, Dick Johnson eighth, Mark Scape ninth, Larry Perkins in tenth spot, followed by Gary Rogers and then Greg Hansford in the ANZ Sierra. Well, Tony Longhurst now sits right on the tail of the second of the Johnson cars, the one driven by uh, Tasmanian John Bauer. He's made a couple of moves. If you leave a little opening there, trying to size up the guy, next thing you know, you've dropped about three on the chain. <laughs> Horsepower, not the big factor here today, uh, Mike. The uh, uh, race is a very uh, equaliser because of all the corners. And there's Jim, looks like having to call it a day. He's got his helmet off. He did a great job in qualifying yesterday. This and team were on the ball much more than the rest of us and uh, got their cars well up in the field. And it's a pity to see him go out today. Coming up to uh, complete another lap and Peter Brock continues to lead, but George Fury is getting much, much closer. He certainly is, Gary. And then it really is daylight back to third. That's being held at this stage by Alan Grice. And he's got the wood over Tony Longhurst as Glenn Seaton <laughs> takes the long way home. Sprints through Ned Kelly country to find a way back to the pits. There's Brad Jones going through in the 105 Mobile Sierra. Well, 
the rain will help Gricey the most of all the cars on the on the track that extra weight and I'm sure he filled up the uh, the tank with plenty of juice to even add to that and as such uh, his car will keep gaining on the on the leaders and I think it's the one reason why the skyline is uh, starting to put a little heat on yeah. Rocky he's got a few more kilos than the Sierras and as such that's helping his tires stay nice and warm I don't know what Dick Johnson's race plan is here today, but for all the comings and goings, with Colin Bond out of the race, Jim Richards is out of the race, so is Glenn Seaton. Dick started from position nine, he's still running nine. Well, they've got a, a lot of problem getting their power down onto the ground, Gary, and as such, he might, he might be there for a long time to come, and the wetter it gets, the worse it'll be for him. Georgie Fury, the Tal Malmo farmer, is a beat home track. I wasn't sure about Peter's choice of tires. He's always very keen on running a groove slick. That's the normal race tire with a hand groove uh, through to let the rain through. And I suspect perhaps George has gone all the way with a rain tire and could be just uh, squeezing Peter there. I can't see too many other reasons for it. Well, he's pulled Peter in so quickly that uh, I guess it'll be really pointless, Peter, doing too much in the way of defensive driving because George appears much quicker. He's getting into the ground better. As you can see here, you'll close under brakes. Now we should see how the Nissan gets out of the, uh, the tight turn to lead them onto the back straight. Dunlop tyres have won every round of the Touring Car Championship so far this year, but today we've got Bridgestones, Yokohamas, and Yokohamas running first, second, third. Yes, and the Yokohama boys have done a lot of uh, hard work, and they did seem to have a good combination, not only on the Nissans, but on the other cars they support, Andrew Bredicki and uh, Larry Perkins' car. Here we go now with George Fury, Peter Brockel, just a tried unsteady there as he tried to uh, just steadily get himself into that turn, and... Uh, George Fury is making life unbearable, and all the time Grice is closing on the pair of them. Yes. What a race, the seventh round. Well, George will want to get by him because with Grice proving down on them at the speed he's going, uh, George won't want to waste too much time behind Brock now. I would say for sure that Brocky has chosen uh, groove slicks, and as such is just getting a little bit uh, tricky even for him to control. The top uh, tyre engineer from Dunlop, Shigiki Takagawa, has come out here today especially for this race. I reckon he might have some homework to do when he goes home. I have no doubt he'll have to at least take the sample of the water back, won't he? <laughs> and get his shoes. Once again, we pick up on the race lead of Peter Brock and George Fury just poking the nose of the Nissan Skyline up. Let Peter know he's there and he's ready to challenge. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they both better start worrying about Alan Grice. Well, in fact, if anything, Brock is probably slowing Fury, and that's making life easier for Alan Grice. There he is, right on their tail. That's amazing, you know. Tom Walkingshaw has decided, through whatever Holden Special Vehicles, not to go running this year. That's taken Grice just to dust the cobwebs off the Les Small car. Come to Winton after being in Japan two weeks ago, Charlotte last weekend, and show that a Commodore at least can stay up there and and stay in touch with the boys. It's quite ironical when companies don't have enough faith in their product to support the people that are working with them. Isn't Here it? goes Richards again up the inside, into the He's home got straight. Him. He's got the front. Fury goes through on the inside to take over the lead in the seventh round of the Touring Car Championship. And what was looking good for Peter Rock this weekend, top qualifier and leading off the start. He's now been hosed by George Fury and Alan Grice is now arriving in the Commodore. Yes, it'll only be a matter of time here as well, Mike. Uh, Grice, he's got a nice uh, grip on the, on the road, and uh, I think he'll... Uh, oh, oh yeah, he's done it already. Look at this. Grice straight through the inside of Peter Brock. Just another annoying statistic coming to hand. Uh, this is the first non-Ford Sierra to lead a race since Oran Park, Jim Richards, BMW, 1987. Yeah, that's incredible. Isn't it? Well, there's one thing about this business, mate. You've got to be in it to win it, that's for sure. Yes. It's very hard to uh, you can't sit on the drawing board or sit in the boardroom. It, it doesn't quite work that way. Well, the number of letters that we've had from seven viewers across Australia since this series began saying, we heard all the kerfuffle, Holden was coming back, it'll be terrific to see them take on the Sierras, and it's been dead quiet. No one has said anything. If someone had said we're not racing to a Bathurst or whatever, I think Holden supporters would have felt that they at least knew what was happening. So 0-5 Peter Brock is getting it very, very much sideways the last couple of corners. In the meantime, George Fury still leading from Alan Grice, then back to Brock. Fourth place held by Tony Longhurst, fifth by Mark Scaife, 
sixth, I would think, by Brad Jones, and seventh by Andrew Medecki. Let's check them out for you on the Caldex race score, as called. Fury, the race leader, doing it for Nissan Skyline. Alan Dry second in the FAI Commodore, third is Brock, fourth Longhurst, and fifth Mark Scape. We've got a hell of a race going here at Winton. Race leader in round seven of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship is the Tal Malmo farmer, George Fury, in car number three. Peter Brock comes into the pits for a quick stop, and Alan, you might be right about the decision on tyres. I'm absolutely certain that the, even though they look like rain tyres, that they, they were groove slicks. Yeah, Peter's pretty keen on running yeah. his softer qualifier with a couple of slots in it, which uh, just works as intermediate, but obviously there is no dry line out there. And the full wet's going on now. This position's not totally hopeless. It can happen to a lot of other people who have to come in and do the same thing. But from observation, it looked as if most teams were on full wets to start the race. And it's starting to dry out a little bit now, but as long as there's a slight sprinkle, it'll take time for, for the track to become a, a problem for the rain tires. Well, I guess they've been praying for rain in the Albury Wodonga area, Tal Malmo. Trust a farmer to come good. <laughs> It's nice to see George Isn't out in front. It? It's nice to see Nissan out in front. Uh, Freddie Gibson and his crew have worked extremely hard, very diligently all year. They don't have the horsepower advantage that the Sierra's got. And uh, to come out here and, and give everybody a run for the money today is very pleasing for everyone to see. Equally, uh, George's teammate Mark Scape has now moved to fourth. And so he's thr thrusting through the pack with the Brock pit stop. And he's chasing Tony Longhurst, who's now gone to third. Here's the man running second. Man who started out of position 12, Alan Grice of the FAI Insurance's Commodore. And nice to see Gracie with some support from the uh, Sydney Holden dealer network. That, that's great. And uh, I'm sure that's helping him get uh, through his winning exercise. Well, it's great to see they support some people in motor racing. FIA Insurance, big company with worldwide, uh, or at least Australia-wide uh, affiliations. He's had a busy couple of weeks, as I said earlier. Won a, uh, in a BMW um, in Japan two weeks ago. It was at Charlotte last weekend and pointed today. Just Tony Longhurst, who has been coming through the pack. He looked pretty good early in the race, but he got shuffled out every time he made a move. Well, taking a few shortcuts there to try and uh, get a little bit more grip. You can see just the start of a dry line that's starting to creep through. And... Uh, the rain tires, when they're in the dry, get hot very quickly, or extra hot, and uh, do tend to go a little bit marshmallowish, and as such, uh, give the drivers uh, quite a handful. What we really need is another little shower, or just even a spitting would help to uh, make sure that the rain tires did their job. But I think you're getting it as we speak, Alan, looking at the front of the box here at the moment. Brock, I think, has moved to 13th, uh, having rejoined the field. Dick Johnson, uh, who started, I believe, out of eight today, or ninth, ninth I, I should say, has gone back to tenth. Uh, it's almost inconceivable. Can one put the, the wheels falling off the DJ show strictly down to tyres on two cars today, you believe? Well, a bit more than that, Mike. It's a, it's a very fine balance at the best of times, and even if you're winning, on, only the team managers and, the, and really the drivers themselves are really totally aware of what kind of an advantage they have and they could have been poised there quite precariously in a, in a position that wasn't as strong as everyone had made out. They have got a very good act, they've worked very hard, and full credit to Dick Johnson and his team manager, Neil Lowe, and their total team for always being super organized and on top of all those little problems. But it only takes a little problem to knock you off the perch, and I think that's what they suffered here this weekend. So Mark Scaife moving up to about fifth, and by my recollection fourth and that must put Greg Hansford up fairly close behind him uh, behind uh, Mark we've got He's Andrew Medecki yep then followed by Brad Jones in position six next one after that I think would be John Bow followed by Larry Perkins then Gary Rogers then Dick Johnson and then a very lengthy gap I think back to Peter Brock Dulux Auto Colour, of course, apart from uh, sponsoring uh, our race cam component of Australian Touring Car Championship telecasts. Of course, present a, a Best Turned Out Car Award at each of the rounds. Today's award has gone to Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Sierra. Unfortunately, didn't pay off on the racetrack. That's his third win in the series. Some consolation. I think it's about $900 or $1,000, so that's something for 
for uh, Glenn Seaton today. Oh, very competitive. If anything, uh, I think Tony Longhurst is now starting to get onto the pace with Alan Grice, and I think we can see some action coming up there shortly. There's Mark Scaife in car number 12, sitting back behind them. Well, George has actually opened up on uh, Alan Grice. I think he seems to have, have his measure at this stage, and uh, no doubt uh, a few more... Uh, a few more uh, drops of water out of the sky would, uh, would keep George happy too. Well, there's Longhurst now starting to dial in right behind Alan Grice. I think Grice could be at the stage where the track is dry enough that with the weight of the Commodore, he could have uh, spent his tires and uh, actually be struggling a little bit at this stage. Whereas uh, George's car a little bit lighter, and uh, one thing that Yokohama seems to have been proving to the field over the last number of races, Mike, is that their their race pace, their qualifying pace, didn't seem to make any difference. They've got a nice, durable tire, and I don't think tires are the slightest uh, bit of concern to George Fury at the moment. But they certainly are for Alan Grice at the moment, trying to fend off uh, Tony Longhurst. Longhurst will immediately go to the inside, coming down to this corner, and that's that Grice will cover that. You can expect Rice to do a bit of defensive driving here, I would suspect. This will be the widest Commodore in uh, the world uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes. He's not the guy you really pass. It's the guy you've got to work at for a while. You know, That's uh, fair and, uh, all fair in love and war. Uh, he's not being lapped. Tony has to fight his way back. This is not dirty driving. Christ, he's only doing what he should be doing if he was being lapped. The gentlemanly, the sportsman-like thing to do is to pull over. But this is a, a dice for a position, and as such, uh, Alan Grace is quite entitled to take the inside line on, on every corner he can. And Tony has to slingshot himself back, and he may just be lining himself up here carefully, uh, approach the back straight, and he'll come out a little, well, a little bit earlier than I would have expected. But it's not a very long straight, and here they are under brakes now. Grace is not having anything to do with it. Could be a touch here, and... He's made it. He's got a whoop. Yes, uh, he said, you want to do that? We'll have a bit of that That's back the other way. That's Thanks, pal. That's absolutely uh, almost legend grace. That's standard grace procedure. Uh, as such, uh, giving no quarter, probably a little bit uncalled for. Uh, Tony did get the better of him under brakes there, but he's not going to get out of that mud puddle. Well, Tony wants a, a hand to get out, but I think he's going to need Mike Nelson. He's had it now, mate. He's the only thing he's going to... Be warming up would be the tadpoles. Let's Rice have a look at this. He's going to bang some door handles here today. Well, there, uh, Tony's gone in, giving him a tap there. I, I could uh, probably uh, take my words back. Uh, Tony's initial uh, bump there got Gracie's uh, hair up, and uh, it was tit for tat. And of course, the Commodore came off better. Sierra second best, but uh, there no prizes for. Uh, That's a pity. Tony was doing a good job there. and uh... Yes, I think it'll take them at least until the, the end of the race to... Oh, no. no trying to uh, get it back on the blacktop again. He's dropped a, a fair bit of, uh, of room here as we pick up on guys going through in the uh, number 15 car. George, of course, will have uh, picked that up in his rearview mirror. Being a good rally driver, he sees both forwards and backwards uh, simultaneously. And that'll have uh, given his... Uh, confidence a nice little boost he'll just know that that'll make it all that harder for Gracie to get back up close to him what could have been though now you've got uh, Tony sprinting away again but behind him still is Alan Grice so it's cost him almost a lap <laughs> he's he's in 16th place now Longhurst I think you'll find that unless we get a drop of rain and start to uh, keep that track damp Mark Scaife is going to be the man to arrive and make uh, life difficult for Alan. Well, you remember at Perth, Mike, uh, everything looked rosy for the leader up towards the three-quarter mark, and then all of a sudden, those tires were just too hot, and uh, they had to change to dry tires. We've still got a fair way to go in the seventh round of the Australian Touring Car Championship from Winter. Don't forget the grand final of the series comes to Sydney's Oran Park Raceway on Sunday the 9th of July. Promise to be a huge day out there at Oran Park, so make your plans to be out there. And if you can't, make sure you join us on 7 and, of course, the Prime Network across Australia. Well, gee, Mark Scape's done a great job for Nissan since they uh, cranked up the third car. This is a kid with a ton of uh, talent. Don't see him in uh, any hot spots. 
I guess uh, it was a wise move uh, by Freddie Gibson to come here with uh, with numbers today. He's lost Jim, but he's got George leading the race and Mark making a bold move for third. And for the first time today, the sky has actually cleared, so we may well see uh, a run for the pits by some of the competitors. Pretty soon, I would say. One of our on-screen car number 18 is in sixth position. It's Peter Brock as we take uh, the Jula Tula Colour Race Cam in the uh, number 05 car. Master start finishing line down to the right hand. He's in ninth place. It's a pity that Peter lost the initiative. He, he had that there on the, on the opening laps and I'm sure took that gamble. Uh, it could have paid off. It was a 50-50 bet. Uh, but once you lose your uh, run, it's uh, very hard to get back into the momentum and uh, I think it'll be a tough job for him to get up there and, and regain first place. That's the series leader, Dick Johnson, car number 17, and he's back in 10th position still behind uh, Peter Brock. He's also got Larry Perkins, Gary Rogers up ahead of him. He's got John Lusty behind him. Uh, it's interesting how many Commodores, in fact, are making a show here today, Mike. Uh, uh, Larry Perkins doing a good, steady job. He didn't have a happy run in qualifying, uh, along with a lot of us yesterday and uh, may not have his best foot forward, but he's certainly showing that a Commodore is not out of this competition altogether. But it's quite amazing to see car 17 <laughs> with cars in front of it. If there was betting on the tab today, they'd be calling, <laughs> swabbing them. I tell you what, there's, there's the Lusty Brothers Commodore is now starting to close on, uh, on Johnson's car. As we show, of course, Greg Hansford in car number nine, running strongly there. And our race leader, of course, George Fury in uh, car number three, coming up to put a lap on, I believe, New Zealand's Robbie Crump. I haven't seen much of Robbie. He hasn't had the best of luck since he came to campaign in the Whitaker car, but George takes it down on the inside, and he's through. Let's recap them for you on our Caltex race score. Your race leader is George Fury doing it for Nissan. Second place, Alan Grice in a Commodore. Third, Mark Scaife in a Skylight. Then Andrew Medecki in a Sierra, followed by Brad Jones. The upset round of the series. Back at the Winton Raceway, Brad Jones just rejoining the race after uh, a tyre change. Greg Hansford uh, is in the pits as well at the moment. John Bowers gone to the pits. Dick Johnson's been in for a tyre change and out again. It's all happening. Andrew Medecki, give credit where credit's due, started from 11th position on the grid. He's up uh, running in fourth position at the present time. And we've got to point out that the top four cars are running on Yokohama tyres and the next two are running on Bridgestones. Mr Takagawa has got something to think about. John Bow to the pits as well. Followed in by the lusty Commodore. They're diving in and out of there all over the place at the moment. There's certainly no question at the moment that the guys on those Japanese tyres are certainly going well. Greg Hansford rejoins his second pit stop. Alan, is it just tyres in this case? and uh, I'm afraid uh, that uh, there seems to be a little uh, handling uh, discrepancy there as well. He's having a little trouble with the rear of the car. There's the Steelmark Commodore, Graham Lusty from Swan Hill, who makes all of our uh, fabulous race transporters, uh, not only for the racing industry, but for the road transport industry. Does a great job. I'd say Greg's in a lot of trouble to be passed at that pace, but uh, the Yokohama tires are doing a fabulous job here today. There's no two ways about it. And uh, it's nice to see Andrew Badecki having a good run. He was unfortunate uh, at Lakeside to have that horrible crash. Their teams have rebuilt their car, and he's out doing nicely here. Larry Perkins in the pits in the Castrol Commodore. And Slick's going he's on. He's going back Neil. to Slick's, yeah. Yep. Full reins coming off. Perkins would be a bit disappointed, wouldn't he, when he stacks his performance up alongside Alan Grice? Particularly as he was so strong here last year. Always a lot of things behind the scenes, Gary. You mm. can't be certain. But uh, credit to Grace, he has to pulled one out of the bag and, as Mike said, pulled the car out of, out of the garage after almost a year of uh, not using it and come out and, and done a superb job here. Uh, it's got to be complimented. Chris Lambden in there as well. Another of the Commodore uh, contenders just in behind Alan Grice. Gracie running his lights just to make sure if someone isn't quite looking in the rearview mirror, they might get a little flicker and see this big car coming down on them. 
Peter Brock, by the way, since his tyre change, has been uh, clawing his way back through the field. Now up to fifth position and doing a great, uh, a great drive. The gap between race leader George Fury and second place Alan Grice is about the length of the back straight. It's Mark Scaife. Third. And I think if anything, Scaife's beginning now to close onto the back of Grice. He's to within a couple of seconds. And that's nothing with the amount of time we've got to go, Neil. He'll, uh, he'll hound them up. Um, the Nissans really do particularly seem to be very happy, and bear in mind they're the only cars that haven't stopped. So in terms of, of having a, a real run to the flag, uh, there may be very little that can stop them, although, as you said, Gary, uh, Peter Brock is coming through the field sure uh, is. much more efficiently than I thought he would have been uh, capable. When you look on the road, it just front of these guys at the moment there's a very definite groove appearing Alan and that'll be interesting to see how these tyres cope with the temperature increase. There's 25 I, minutes of racing time left. I know yeah. that uh, at Wanneroo for example uh, the Nissan team were a little bit unhappy with the way their wet tyres performed. There's been a lot of work done in that area. Jim said this morning the car is just sensational on its wets and so there's certainly been an advantage in the early stages. But unfortunately is drying up a bit uh, now and uh, as such uh, they might be praying for just at least a sprinkle. You like the track race cam with Peter Brock up to fifth position. Man who led in the uh, early stages of the race before being uh, reeled in by George Fury and Alan Grice and company. This is a bit like flying your F111 in your lounge room, isn't it, around this track? I'm just watching his, uh, his movement with the steering wheel there. I can picture exactly what he's doing and how much uh, tension he's got. He's not taking any chances through these tight corners, so uh, it must be still a little bit slippery. You can see when they generally hold it, that little bit of a wiggle is just coaxing it. People think he's out of control. That's absolutely uh, organized. He's doing that on purpose to whip the front tires around a little bit and he'll control the rear of the car from fishtailing by the amount of throttle he puts on the, on the gas pedal. They have to be coaxed around the corner and uh, the terms uh, turn in uh, are referred to as, is the speed at which that front end of the car will respond to the driver's request. And uh, what we all like is a, is a tire that will whip the car in as fast as lightning and virtually while, the car, while that's happening and while the steering wheel is being turned, you plant your right foot and bring the car around Tony Longhurst on to the power. pits. And a tyre change being affected on that car. Slick tyres going on. Maybe a cursory check to make sure there's no other debris under the car. From the earlier incident with Alan Grice. Well, this is starting to look like Le Mans, Neil, with uh, three and four pit stops. I don't know that uh, many teams have got enough tyres on the other side of the circuit. We all had to come from the inside of the track to the, to the centre of the circuit. And... Uh, if that sounds confusing, it's only because I'm looking at the wrong way. <laughs> but uh, we don't have all our pit, pit equipment in the, in the pit lane. Well, if Medecki's in, that's an indication that even the Yokohamas aren't going to withstand the dry surface forever. There, there he is. is. Yep. Slick's going on. Port Macquarie driver in the Kenwood Sierra. Great showing so far. Can he recover now on a drying track? And there's a very definite seven or eight foot wide groove around the course move one centimetre off it and you're in plenty of trouble but if you can stay on there there is grip to be had. How long is George Fury going to stay out there before he comes in for a change? That's the question. That'll have Fred Gibson wearing through uh, a few moments of tension. Well they're on uh, radio control and you can be sure that if uh, Freddie can't stand the tension he's already asked George how do you feel and uh, with the lead they've got they should be able to come in if they need to put four tyres on in about 25 seconds and uh, that may not hurt him. And he has got a reasonable lead. I've got the clock on now to see what the gap is back to Alan Grice. He certainly couldn't duck in and out and maintain the lead, but he might recover his speed. He's 11.4 seconds in front as Andrew Medecki leaves the pits with Yokohama Slicks on the car now. I'd suspect that uh, the plot with George would be to try, and as long as he felt he wasn't being disadvantaged, if he didn't see Gracie sneaking up on him, he'd like to stay out there as long as he can. Talking about sneaking up, Alan, we've now got just 1.2 seconds per 12. We can see it. There it is, Mark Scaife right behind Alan Grice. This is the scrap for second and third. And Scaife really now delicately balancing potentially his best ever run in a touring car amongst the big lads. Well, he won't be unaware of that factor, and he'll certainly want to come home with a place under his belt here today. 
Uh, Fred Gibson has given this young fellow a, a start, which uh, very few young fellows get, and uh, he hasn't hardly put a foot wrong uh, any time he's been in a, in a Nissan, and uh, looks like having a great career in front of him. Alan Grice now past the Toyota. Gap from Mark Scaife back to um, the Shell car is about eight seconds. That was Dick Johnson. Well, there's one thing certain that if uh, the Skyline has to come in, I doubt whether Grassy, Grassy could hold on either. So it'll just be a little bit of cat and mouse here. And George may not feel as comfortable as he wants to be but as long as he can maintain his existing gap on Grice, I doubt very much that he would be uh, inclined to come in, and there's still the possibility that it'll start raining again, and then, of course, you've got to go through the whole exercise again. Andrew Medecki dropped four spots on that tyre change, uh, came back out on the track in eighth place. I, uh, I'm working on the assumption that Alan is wearing an intermediate or a wet tyre. I missed the start of the race, so... Uh... I believe he's still on, on uh, wets, man. Yeah. Yeah, so really... We've got to look at our best placed slick shot car at the moment to see what's going to, or what the likely scenario is if you throw all the marbles up in the air. Well, that's Peter Brock. Uh, don't, well, Dick Johnson also had a very good stop and is back out there. Uh, but obviously the way his car was handling, not likely to be the threat that Peter is. George Fury continues to lead. Alan Grice on screen, second spot, pursued by Mark Scaife, third. Peter Brock in fourth, fifth place held by Brad Jones. Notice Mark's diving out for a little bit of moisture here and there, trying mm -hmm. to keep those tyres cool. Grice is using every available centimetre, threading their way now through some traffic that's going to give Mark even more of an advantage, so he can get right up onto the bumper bar of the Holden. He ducks wide, uses all the road underneath the Matt Wacker Commodore. Mm, he's got, got a nice position there, but I don't believe that he has got the horsepower to pull out of the slipstream that Tony Longhurst had with the Sierra. He can shadow Gricey, and certainly he won't want to make one bit of a mistake. Grice's car put its power down well as Larry Perkins takes his gloves off, and George Fury comes to the pits. Fred Gibson, team manager at the front. Slick tyres going on. Grice has gone to the lead. Scaife in second place now. As long as they have a good stop, It'll only be a 15 second or so deficit. Meanwhile, Dick Johnson's fought his way into the battle between Scaife and Alan Grice. As Fury leaves, a pretty good stop from the Nissan team. And look at this scrap on here at the moment. Well. OK, now I understand that Johnson's a lap down, so it's imperative that he now get through these guys. And then he's got to make up another 60 odd seconds. So it's still only Scape and Grice scrapping for the lead. Well, good management at this stage would be to leave Mark Scape right there and shadow Grice as long as he can and uh, let George get back through the field and try and regain his position. There are only six cars on the front running lap at the moment and we ought to give a plug to the little Aussie battler, Gary Wilmington in a Commodore. He is in fact running in sixth place at the moment. Well, that's very credible. Yeah. Very credible. Dick Johnson unwinding a lap on race leader Alan Grice. And will pick up a lot more ground when Grice comes in for tyres, which he's going to have to do before long. Look at this, Mark Scape on the inside. Puts him in a difficult position as he gets to the sweeper. And there are very few guys that are as tough as Alan Grice to pass. I've never noticed that, Neil. Oh, gee, I don't know. He's not doing anything wrong. These two are dicing for a place. He's not expected to pull over and say, after me, Mark. And, uh... Now, the difficulty here is Mark will start to be more anxious with his right foot, which only makes the equation worse as his tyres get hot. You really have to temper the frustration to use your foot to overcome the, the fact that you're in the, second. The, lack that, the fact that you're not going by into yeah. the lead, yes. Yeah. <laughs> George Fury rejoined the race after that tyre change in fourth position. So it's Grice, Scaife, Rock, Fury, then Brad Jones. That's Freddie having a 
little sink, if nothing else. There he goes again. He's ducked to the inside. Squeezed up on the inside. Slithers through. Gricey's given him some room. And Mark Scaife through to the lead. Leads around to the Touring Car Championship. Mark Scaife. Well, we're looking at great preparation here. It's not easy to get... Uh, it's not easy to get one car to the start line, let alone two, and Fred Gibson started three today, two of them running well. We've had 45 minutes of racing, 15 minutes to go in this seventh round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Mark Scaife, the race leader. Dick Johnson, the series leader, still back in the, uh, the pack in sixth position at the present time. Only two people have uh, got a chance at the championship with one round remaining after the day. That is Dick Johnson and John Bauer. Now, Peter Brock is also beginning to buy into this argument slowly but surely. Yes, I think if it uh, doesn't rain. I notice the Nissan crew are also preparing for a stop as we take a look at the Caltex race score with Mark Scaife leading from Alan Grice. In third, we have Peter Brock. Watching the shell car getting sideways, George Fury in fourth and Brad Jones rounds out the top five. Don't miss the last 15 minutes of this race. Peter Brock coming up now behind Mark Scaife in uh, car number 12. Scaife has been leading the race. Brock went in earlier for a tyre change and now swaps it straight down the inside and Brock comes back to take over the lead in the seventh round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. What an upset today here at Winton. So well, Brock leads at car number 05. There's nothing they'd love more. The mobile team have worked hard and uh, not without uh, a few disappointments uh, in the beginning of the season, but here they are. And here is uh, Mark Scaife now coming in, car number 12. Led the race after taking uh, Alan Grice. And Mark Scaife comes in, as just about everyone in the field has come in for a tyre change, with the exception of Grice in the Commodore. So, a pit stop for Mark Scaife in car number 12. That will also enable George Fury to move up a, uh, a spot in the pack, and that will, I would think, almost move Fury up into a uh, third spot. Meantime, there's our race leader, Peter Brock. Still some racing to do in the seventh round. About 10 or 12 minutes left. Giving it a little shortcut there in the middle of the S's. Very tight S's here. And uh, you can see the plume coming out of his exhaust pipe. That's a uh, full rich position. And with the cool air here today, the turbocharged cars are responding quite nicely. I don't think it'd be lack of power that's bothering anybody at the moment. And well, what is interesting, uh, George Fury, I would think would be almost now up to uh, second. Fury up to second. Grice at this stage. Brad Jones is third. Grice now fourth. Face of changing fortunes. There were no doubt about uh, who's leading the race. That's Brocky. That lap scorer Nigel Greenway is busier than a one arm paper hanger. Peter Brock's team manager. Oh, his crew chief, uh, Mike. Mort, the lovely Mort. For all the girls around Australia. Give you a rundown shortly of the top ten as Peter Brock continues to lead. Time running out. Coming up on the inside of Andrew Medecki. Floats it down on the dry line. George Fury in second spot in the uh, Nissan. Brad Jones, 105, third place. Dropping Alan Grice back to fourth. So Grice has not been into the pits. And Tony Longhurst back in the pack after his spin earlier. He's right. been into the pits. So Gary go. to update us. Top ten. Oops, as we have 43 get around sideways there in the, in the grass. It's lost it coming out of that turn. That's Clive Smith in this end. Yeah, top ten. Peter Brock is the leader. George Fury second. Brad Jones third. Alan Grice in fourth. Mark Scape is fifth. Dick Johnson is sixth position, John Bow seventh, Andrew Badecki eighth, Tony Longhurst is ninth, and Gary Wilmington rounds out the top ten. Well, one of the things that takes place when we're developing these cars, Mike, is the stretching it 
in dry conditions. And the tires absorb a tremendous amount of the idiosyncrasies that take place in the suspension. You can see here Peter now totally happy on the dry line where he's able to throw the car around a little bit, get the power on, and, and instantly catapult the oh. car. Oh, 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 oh. Lyndon Rees Muller. Across the grass, the concrete wall. Once you get on that grass, it's lethal. You actually go faster than the speed you were going when you left the tarmac. Well, Lyndon uh, steps out of the car. Much more you can say. He's come off the racetrack and uh, slid across to connect with the concrete wall. A little bit of damage there. He was doing well, had a great run last weekend. Let's have a look at it. Once again, you just know where it's going. He had the wheel turned. He tried to bring it around, but it was having anything to do with it. He saw a good jar in the neck, too, as he hit the wall. Only two cars in the top ten have not been in for a tyre change, and they're both Commodores, Alan Grice and Gary Wilmington. All the rest have. And we've got uh, seven minutes and 15 seconds of racing to go. Well, we may not know until the end of the race, but uh, Alan Grice may have chosen a very trick intermediate that has uh, managed him to, uh, to manage to let him get through this race without a tire change. Certainly fourth is not uh, not a bad position. Well, Peter Brock is the leader and he's probably got about 10 or 12 car lengths on G George Fury in car number three. Ray Jones about 10 seconds further afield in third spot. Is George now, he'll be giving it everything he can. There's no prizes for second, they're not interested in that. No, they want to win here today. They've done most of their testing here at uh, the tight confines of uh, Winton. Gee, they were looking good early with Jim Richards in the rain. Rice Commodore just gone past our commentary uh, position and uh, sounds a little bit rough. Well, he's just about driven the rear wheels on it today. And a few other people's cars. Only those who poke their noses in first. <laughs> George is getting quite close. There's yep. uh, certainly a possibility here. Uh, Peter had it was one of the first to go uh, onto uh, dry tires. Brad Jones here at the moment, but uh, Brocky's tires may be just that little bit more used than George's. You're right, and uh, he's such, closing out like he, gangbusters. Once they go off, they go off in a big way, and uh, just I, I think it's it's going to be uh, tough. Potatoes here for Peter Brock in a minute. Whoops, there's 139 heading off towards the wall. He's out of harm's way. David Sala, goodbye for the day. Back at the front, look at this battle. Yeah. Just about everyone's had a shot at uh, leading this one today. Peter Brock under siege now from George Fury. Well, George it, has got enough time to do it, mate. It's not as if this is the last lap. Well, there's Somebody. about five laps remaining, Alan. Okay, come down. The horsepower of the Sierra is still just edging him out down that main straight. George isn't going to take any chances. They're coming up on a bunch of cars. It includes uh, Dick Johnson's number 17. Oh, oh Brock. Brock. threw it. He threw it himself. Almost felt that one coming. He was going so strongly through that left-hander. And it's uh, much tighter than the camera angle shows. Had a lot of momentum going there. It would have had to mean a very good tire to hold that that amount of g-force george certainly didn't touch him no not at all just pressured away and uh, pete let let go himself so george fury the local boy from tal malmo will replay it for you peter's already broken it loose there george didn't have to do too much more but peter caught it well here peter was very keen to get the power of the turbo on to scoot up that hill mic and he just hit it a little bit prematurely and we're 54 minutes and 55 seconds into this race. There's Peter Brock having made an excellent recovery. And he's now got his teammate Brad Jones not too far behind. Uh oh, oh he no, he hasn't. Has. He did have his teammate Brad Jones not too far behind. Brad's gone for the... Uh, the infield area. He's, he's had a stuck, slide off. Emulating stuck. the Crompton parallel parking in the mud. Once you're out there, you don't get back. Let's have a look what happened to Peter Brock. This is from race camp. He's Whoa. already a valiant. That's full lock. There ain't yeah, no he more. Tried. Oh, he couldn't go any further, Neil. He he's already lock. got her in the gear he wants. Yeah, no. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Not fooling around. Nice recovery. 
and in fact saved the car from a lot of damage that was a nasty yeah. spot to go off well that's the spot that bob holden uh, went off yesterday and uh, we saw what his car looked like after that it was a very nasty incident not too much left well what a race we've seen here today the uh, seventh round we've got the hand out the window now, now that's, the, that's the old horn button we don't have horns on these cars that work so uh, the hand the uh, please move over please robbie you're wasting your time blowing into the key <laughs> <laughs> exactly. i um i'm trying to think when I last saw Peter Brock spin a car in a race? Uh, not too often, but I, can, I, I won't be nasty and say <laughs> I remember when. I think it was 85 at uh, Calder. Yes, yeah, that's right, yeah. You want a statistician, just call it. <laughs> okay. I came up on, a, on an RX-7 once and uh, it, it caused a little uh, constellation. Oh, indeed, yes. yes. I, yes. But he doesn't do it very often. No. He was trying hard. He knew he had to, had to fight hard to stay in front of George. Look at this. If this will be just the moment that Fred Gibson will savour for ages. The George Fury coming up to put... The Nikons will be flashing furiously on this lap. Putting a lap on Dick Johnson and John Bauer who are together. Managing Director Mr. Deverson from Nissan Australia is here to uh, witness the three-car assault this weekend. Fred didn't run the car last... or the cars last week at Amaru in the Amscar series to give this the absolute best possible shot, concentrating all their resources on a win, and there's now very good potential that that's going to happen. This is uh, Fred showing a ton of emotion, as you can see. <laughs> if George can do it right in front of Fred, he'll smile. But he knows that uh, George is sitting right in behind uh, the two Shell Sierras that have dominated the Touring Car Championship thus far. I think Freddie would just assume that he got away from them and that uh, didn't have the potential to touch or the slightest accident at this stage. I think he can afford to sit there, but he's not about to. He's gonna gonna go by if he can. He's got Andrew Medecki behind him, getting him onto uh, to race. There goes Andrew. He's gonna have a slice at it now. Oh, this and have really done a great job. Andrew's in eighth position. So he just w wants to get on and race the two uh, red uh, Sierras that are in front, try and finish in front of them. So there's Medecki. And our race leader, George Fury, doing it for Nissan. Not too far off the finish of this race, let me tell you. Time is really running out. Incidentally, Mark Scaife has now elevated himself back to third, having passed Alan Grice, now back in fourth. I expect the chequered flag might even come out this time around. We'll wait and see. Round seven of the Australian Touring Car Championship. What a day it's been. Here comes Georgie Fury, car number three for Nissan. No. One more lap, perhaps, for... I make it 59 minutes and 37 seconds. Well, perseverance pays off in any uh, business, Mike, and you're looking at it paying dividends. Oh, 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 no, please. George, hang on to it. My goodness me, the farmer got excited. Well, it just shows that uh, you can't lose the uh, concentration for a millisecond around here. There's and look who's behind it. That's Brock, uh, three car lengths behind in the scrap for the chequered flag. It is not over. It's now exactly 60 minutes and one second into this race. And here comes George, and all of a sudden it becomes paramount to get on with this because he's got Brock closing again on him after uh, spinning off the racetrack and coming back. The order, Fury, Brock, then Scaife then Grice, then Brad Jones, and these two men scrapping for the lead in the absolute closing stages of this race. They come down the back straight now for the final time. Medecki pulling out to try and get Johnson. He's already passed Johnson. Brock making up ground now on the Nissan. Oh, uh, one of the shell cars has gone in front of them. If he comes back, he could cop Fury. No, he misses him. Goodness gracious me. Here comes George Fury. Last corner, checkered flag. The Sierra domination is broken. George Fury wins at Winton Motor Raceway. Peter Brock places second. Goodness me, what a finish to this race today. That's a tremendous tremendous victory. A real credit to the Nissan team. Fred Gibson, uh, George Fury naturally pulling it off under great pressure and great duress. I think you'd tremendous agree. Victory. I think you'd agree, Alan. Uh, you've been campaigning the Sierra now for two seasons, but it's just great to see something else get up there and win oh, the naturally. occasional race. It has been a lay down reserve for a long time, and it's just an indication of what's coming for Nissan. A new car next year, and uh, obviously uh, going to put plenty of heat on, on the rest of us for the rest of the season. Let's take a look and see what happened on our Caltex replay last time when they came down to the, uh, the bottom turn. There was. Wow. John Bow, I think it was, yes. car 18. And look at this, I mean, 
is fate playing a hand here. George Fury just gets through by Correct. two feet. Stops on a sixpence. Oh. And, Peter Brock uh, behind. And, and Brock actually waved about us and went past. <laughs> but there's the winner this afternoon of the seventh round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Well, that's great for George Fury. Let's recap them for you on our Caldex race score. George Fury, the race winner for Nissan. Peter Brock plays the second and Mark Scape takes third also in a Nissan Skyline. Excitement down here on the start finish line. The finish line is unbelievable. George Fury, congratulations. It's been a while between drinks. What a race. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, fantastic. We we knew our cars would go really well here, and uh, it's a bit unfortunate that uh, uh, Jim and uh, Mark sort of fell out early. Uh, but uh, Freddie made the right decision on the tyres, and uh, it all came together well. The Yokohama tyres just worked fantastic in the wet, and then later on in the dry. Uh, two words, Peter Brock. How was it? Fantastic, uh, and congratulations, George. I've never enjoyed a race so much, I reckon. Time's up. See you at Oran Park.